special announcement. The story that you're reading is a real story, and this is the real girl. This is a so we're just going to kind of talk a bit, the two of us together. We kind of like to do that together instead of alone, right? And so you know her backstory, and now we want you to hear, as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story. And so I'm going to ask a question and then give the microphone to Alethea. So Alethea, um, by the time you were 32, this had been going on all your life, you finally got the opportunity to do something different. So I want you to tell me about how your life began to change. So um, I got I got it. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was actually told about Love Springs through church. I went to church the first weekend. I was back from Portland for money for my husband, who was trying to sell me for drugs in Portland, Oregon. He was on meth. Um, and we th this lady knew Mary Frances. Um, who's the North, and she told me within a week I was in Wellspring. Like, uh, the intake, she had me on the phone with the intake because I was just a boo-hooing mess and didn't know what I was going to do. My sister lived here. I knew my problems were much bigger for her to handle. Um, so, I ended up going to Wellspring and was given, <laughs> was given um, a book and I had a Bible. And I grew up in Scientology, so every, like it, uh, spirituality was kind of like it was sexualized for me because of my mother's schizophrenia, um, and she was she was the, the person who sexually abused me. Um, so it, I I guess I was just I was very scared and afraid and. Um, I had all these people just come around me to love me like I had never been loved before and just continued for, I mean, I, I've, I was at Wellspring for two and a half years and just continued to love me and show me that they were not going to give up on me. And it just, it's something in my heart changed. I just, I finally, I finally felt what, um, forgiveness and love was, and I was able to forgive myself. You have to know that just because she walked through those doors, it was not easy. It was hard, hard work. And a lot of people walk through the doors and don't stay. And so you stay, and I just want to commend you in front of these people that say, One of the things that Alethea and I have talked about, and we actually are in the middle of writing a book, and she's part of that, and uh, we talked about, gosh, something should have happened in my life. And I know you guys thought of some ideas, and I just want to kind of, I want her to hear what you think could have helped her, and then we're going to talk about what happened next. So can you just yell out, what do you think could have happened that could have maybe changed her trajectory of her life so that she'd have to continue that cycle. Join Say that again. Joined up thinking it all the pieces were in too many study files. Yeah. It was not joined up. Right. That we talked about that. Why didn't the teacher or the social worker or the or the medical person say something's wrong here? Age of seven, when she was seven years old, that she was taking care of the Yeah. You're right. Yes, good job. Well, this is much more about So something that's happening now through te the improved technology in some of the European schools is that we have a system that when the kids come in, the teacher ticks them in through the computer system. The parents can sign the kids in out as sick before school. So within the first 15 minutes of school starting, the headmistress already has a list of the gap of who's missing. And she has 15 minutes, those 15 minutes, to sort out what, where the missing kids are. And it's a brilliant system. You know, one of the things that we talked about a lot is that 
a lot of times we think it's the teacher, the government, this, that, and the other, but it's also regular citizens. I, we were just talking about this weekend. You know, the people that in Ohio knew something was wrong, but they didn't say anything. And so we talked about the fact it's important that people say, observe and say something. And so I want to tell you, I'm going to let Alethea tell you this amazing story, but you heard me talk about Empowered Living Academy. Well, Alethea was one of the pilots. She was our guinea pig. She was one of our guinea pigs. We didn't know what we were doing when we started, but I want her to tell you what she's doing now and about how that happened. So talk about like the training and the apprentice. I'll let you do training, then we'll go apprentice. We'll do what else. I do want to say um, one thing back to what we were talking about um, real quick. I think that when there's, when there's situations of poverty, sometimes there's so much poverty around that the people that are living in the poverty don't notice the dysfunction. So I think that going into the places where there's so much poverty and it, because people aren't going to report those things, they're living in it. Um, I think that was a big thing. Okay, but so to the empowered, um, the empowered living um, and the um, higher hope. Oh my gosh, I had I've had five years of total schooling. I have I am I can type maybe seven words a minute, and I was so scared. I'm sorry. I was so scared going into this, um, and they have just stood by me and walked me through it. And now I'm working for a multi-billion dollar company. I have a business card. <laughs> you know, I'm like, it's it, sometimes it's so unreal that it's like, it's hard for me to even believe. I'm like, is that really me? Because <laughs> it's, it's just, it's amazing. It's just, I mean, I never, ever, ever imagined I'd see myself here. I used to think that I would be lucky if I lived past my, first it was 19, then it was 21, then it was, the age always, I always thought that I was going to die from AIDS or disease or something because of the way that I lived. So, this is like, it's just been a miracle. So Alethea was a part of that first class, and I shared with you that we brought, we've uh, partnered with Ronstadt, and it's just been an amazing process. And I remember the first time we were in the, we actually partnered with Coke as well, and so one of the guys at Coke got us the boardroom, and so the girls got the fancy treatment. Um, so everybody that was helping, as well as the girls, were sitting around the table in the boardroom. And I remember after everybody was saying, well, we're going to do this for you, we're going to do this for you, we're going to do this. And, um, I said, okay, girls, what do you want out of it? And I remember you specifically saying what you felt like she might be able to gain. And would you share that with us? Just so that we kind of go all the way back a bit. Um, yeah. Um, I'm like, that was, that was um, yeah, that was a year ago. Okay. Um, I, wanted, I wanted computer training. Um, I wanted... Um, I, is that, is that, I, I don't recall like specifically what, I think I, I think it was hard for me to see like, like but I think the main thing was the computer training. Um, I really, really wanted to be, I wanted that Excel and the Word and I wanted to be able to um, be proficient at that and, um, and to, to, to be, yeah, to be proficient in the, in the computer job. One thing I will never forget that Alethea told me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in your mouth. <laughs> because she said to me, okay, so I learned so much about myself in Wells Spring. And, I, and I, I, I developed a relationship with God when I was in Wells Spring. And I, and I had developed a lot of wonderful friends while I was in Wells Spring. But I never thought I was going to be able to have a job. And for the first time in my life, I feel like I have the, the skills to be able 
to live in society and and that that part was really important because you get you come out of the program and it's like you you've got all this counseling and you've got all these tools under your belt but it's like okay where do where do I go from here you know I I if I go back to bartending it's the same thing you know the the and and you know the the flight mode is let me seek out a man because he'll take care of me um so feeling empowered to be, have those skills and to know that okay you know what I don't have to do that you know I can I I can sit down at a desk and and you know work a computer and I know Excel and I'm I'm valuable feeling valuable you know that's, that's very important in Wellspring they teach you you know to you're you're valuable through God and that's oh that's so that's where I turn even because it's trust me I still struggle <laughs> but um just outside of that um, well, as you can see, she is a beautiful picture of transformation, and it took, it took a lot of people being involved, from people who do advocacy, just like we were talking about up here, to people who were involved in law enforcement and were able to kind of, even at some points in time, get her away from some in unsafe places, laws that are being changed. It took all of those things. It took caring people for her life to be different. It took a company that took a risk. That I'm gonna train these young women, I'm gonna invest in them, and I'm even gonna hire some of them. And so I just wanna report to you that it's been an amazing journey for all of us. And we are seeing some remarkable things happening. And if you talk about breaking the cycle of trafficking and breaking the cycle of poverty, most of our young women are moms. And if you're gonna change it, you've got to get them into sustainable employment. And so that's what we're seeing happen. And I just wanted, we were just talking, Trace, that I want them to see the real thing. And I'm telling you, this girl is the real thing. Uh, this time is uh, almost 12 o'clock, so just give our, our panel another round of great applause. I'm sure if you have any questions for our panelists, I'd be happy to, to uh, take them after.